hosting and selling courses using WordPress. In this video, I'm going to show you all the elements that are necessary to run your own online course hosting operation using WordPress. And then we're going to compare it with popular online course hosting platforms like Thinkific and Teachable to see the advantages and disadvantages of using one or the other. Let's do it. To sell online courses on WordPress, you need six elements for sure and four elements that are optional. The first element is you need to get a domain name. This is the name of your school, your school.com or .ca, something. You get that at a company like Namecheap or GoDaddy. Then that domain needs to point to your web host. This is something like Bluehost or HostGator where you are going to install WordPress. Because a lot of people think that WordPress is just all you need and it's free and it's awesome, but that is just one of the many elements. WordPress is just a content management system typically to create websites and originally was just a blogging platform. But now over the years has become a very robust content management system to build e-commerce websites, website blogs, about 37% of all the websites in the world, that is billions of websites, run on WordPress. So that's why it's so popular. Now, WordPress by itself is not enough to host online courses. You need what is called a learning management system, which is just a plugin. On WordPress, you can easily install plugins from within WordPress. You just search for the plugin and then you can install it or you can upload it and install it. One of the most popular learning management systems is called LearnDash. There's another one called Sensei and there's many out there. But without this plugin, you cannot host online courses. The plugin allows you to take student registrations, to create chapters and lessons, to create quizzes and assignments, basically everything that you need to run your online school. Now, another thing a lot of people don't know is that just having WordPress on your web host with a learning management system is not enough because you cannot host your videos on that web host typically. You need to host your videos on a third-party platform that is specific to video hosting. And the reason why is because most web hosts don't allow you or are not optimized to deliver video. So three options that are typical are YouTube, Vimeo, and Wistia. YouTube is free, but there's an issue with YouTube, which is, is not designed to host online courses. It's designed to host public videos or tutorials or cat videos. But you can use YouTube using this little hack, which is there are three modalities when you're publishing your YouTube video. You can either make it public, which means it's searchable by the entire world. Then you can make it private, which means it's only available to you or to anybody that is signed with your account. Or you can make it unlisted. And that is the trick. You make it unlisted and that means it's not searchable, but anybody that has the link, the direct link to your YouTube videos could potentially watch your videos for free. Now, this is unlikely to happen. And if you don't have the budget to pay for a video hosting company, then YouTube is your best bet. But then if you have some money for video hosting, it's highly recommended that you choose something like Vimeo or Wistia because they allow you to protect your video links. So if somebody were to use, try to access that link from other sites other than your site, you can protect it so they cannot see it or download that video. Of course, you have to pay for that feature, but this is how most people do that. So once you upload your video lectures onto the video hosting company, then you have to embed it inside your lectures, inside the learning management system. All right, so as you can see, things get a little bit complex. It's not as easy as installing WordPress and uploading a bunch of videos and then selling them and making millions, no. Now, another thing that a lot of people forget is that the learning management system is not enough. You need a way to collect money. And for that, you need to create an account on either PayPal or Stripe, the most typical payment processing systems out there. And then you have to integrate that with your learning management system. Now with these six elements, you could start hosting and selling online courses using WordPress, right? And there's four other elements that are optional, but helpful. And, and a lot of people will use as well, which is email automation. They will integrate with either ConvertKit, MailChimp, or ActiveCampaign or Infusionsoft to be able to send marketing emails to your students, to build your email list, to be able to promote courses. I mean, it's 
likely that before you even installed WordPress or chose a web hosting platform, you should have been building an email list so you have somebody to promote your course. And as you already have a huge audience on social media or something like that, you need a way to promote that course. And usually email marketing software is the way to do that. And you want to integrate that with your learning management system. But it's not 100% required. Then on top of that, you can integrate your hosting operation with many other tools. A typical one would be something like Google Analytics so you can see how your web pages and your landing pages are performing in terms of where the traffic is coming from, what's happening with that traffic, what's the behavior of the users visiting your website, and specifically how well your pages are converting, your landing pages. Because if you're sending people from your email list so if your funnel looks like, okay, I do free videos on YouTube or I do paid advertising, and then I send them to my email list and from them I promote my course on WordPress, then you want to know how these visitors are behaving and whether they're converting into paid customers or not. And you can do that through analytics like Google Analytics or Mixpanel. There are many different anal analytics tools. You can integrate them using something like Zapier or Automate.io. Sometimes you can integrate them directly into your learning management system. Uh, but with a tool like Zapier, you can integrate with thousands of third-party tools as well, something that other people do in order to increase their sales or to be able to reach a bigger audience is working with affiliates. And you can either work inside an affiliate marketplace like Hotmart or ClickBank or Commission Junction. There are many different marketplaces. You have to be accepted. You have to go through an approval process as well. And if you don't qualify, you still could run your own affiliate program. You have to pay a monthly fee to do that. And tool like Tap Affiliate could help you distribute affiliate links to your affiliates and then they could help you promote your courses and then they keep a commission. They could track the commission with this tool. But literally the first six elements are the ones that you need to. Now, as you can see, it gets a little bit more complex than probably you thought at the beginning. Uh, and you are maybe wondering, how does this compare to now popular options like Teachable or Thinkific, which are just companies specifically dedicated to self-hosting uh, online courses? So I did a comparison for you. I crunched some numbers and you can make a decision, which it's going to be pretty obvious <laughs> once you see the numbers as to whether it makes sense to you go with WordPress uh, or Thinkific or Teachable or some of these uh, platforms. So if we look at all of the different elements that it are required to run your own school online, uh, then you can see that a third party tool like Thinkific or Teachable basically do everything, almost everything for you. So they provide you with a domain for free. Now, it's, this is a domain that is branded with their URL. It, it's going to say their thinkific.com or teachable.com or something like that. So if you do want a custom domain name, then you have to buy it. And then if you upgrade to one of their paid plans, you could use your own domain. But by default, you don't have to even worry about how to get a domain because they provide you with one. Now, they act as a combination of a web host, a video host, content management system, and learning management system all in one. So you don't have to think about all these different parts because you can upload the videos directly to these platforms. You don't have to pay for a third-party platform to host your videos, which is really nice. Then in terms of payments, it depends what tool are you using. Sometimes they collect the payments on your behalf, so you don't have to worry about creating an account with PayPal or, or Stripe. But I mean, some if you decide to get paid by PayPal, you still need a PayPal account anyways. Sometimes you can enter your bank details and then just, they'll just do a direct deposit every day or week or month, depending on what you select. In the case of Thinkific, you can integrate with Stripe or PayPal. That means you have to create those accounts separately and then go through the integration process, which is very simple. Now, a lot of these tools also run their own affiliate program, so you don't have to pay for a third-party affiliate program. In the case of Thinkific, it's very easy. You can make any of your students, convert them into an affiliate with a few clicks, and then you can gen it generates automatically as many affiliate links as you want to for each course that you have um, and then you can just send them those links and then they could log in into their Thinkific account and they see if they made any sales. Uh, analytics, they provide some analytics as well. You can see and specifically, you can see how our students are going through the lessons, who are who is engaged or not. And in terms of more in-depth analytics like uh, web traffic and all of that, they integrate with tools like Mixpanel and Google Analytics as well. In terms of email automation, it's limited. 
it's not comparable to what you would get with a third-party tool like ConvertKit or MailChimp, but they will send automatic emails. Once somebody registers for your school, they will send an automatic welcome email message. They'll also send reminders to make sure, sure people finish their courses and lessons, and they probably have a congratulatory message at the end saying, you completed your course. Good job. But if you want to do more in-depth email marketing efforts, then you can integrate within these tools with third-party tools like ConvertKit or MailChimp. And then they also have other integrations with other analytic tools, with other payment gateways, etc., and also with autom uh, automation tools like Zapier Automate.io, which allow you to integrate with absolutely everything that you want. But as you can see, out of all these elements, out of all these 10 elements, they take care of most of them. Whereas when you go with WordPress, boom, <laughs> you have to do everything yourself. And of course, this is a lot more work. And I'm, we're going to compare costs to see if it makes sense from a financial point of view to run your own WordPress operation. So if we uh, calculate all the costs of running all these tools, you get about a $960 a year. And these are average costs for an average installation with one or two courses and not a huge email list. So basically what you would expect to spend if you have an email list of about a thousand people and a couple of courses with a few hundred people. So the biggest cost is going to be well, the, it, depends on, it depends on what web host do you get, but HostGator is pretty cheap. You can get a pretty good server for $50 a year. Uh, domain name, if it's not a premium domain name, it's going to be about $10 a year, so pretty affordable. And then the plugin, the learning management system, it depends, but they are usually about $100 to $200 a year. You can get a something that is a one-time payment fee if you go to a marketplaces that have plugins that allow you to run online uh, online courses but they're they're very limited in the capabilities so if you really want to be serious about hosting your courses on WordPress I would suggest that you go with something like LearnDash uh, or Sensei now it's going to cost you about $150 a year to do so then PayPal and Stripe are free but they do charge you about 3% transaction fee which they do the same thing if you were doing this on a third party platform like Thinkific or Teachable then if you you're running your own affiliate program it really depends if you're going through a mar uh, affiliate marketplace then they don't charge you but you have to be accepted by it and if you run your own affiliate program in like a top affiliate that could be 50 100 dollars a month but i'm gonna say just free because when you start you're probably not gonna go with that the google analytics are free but if you go with mixed panel it's gonna cost you money and one of the biggest expenses, which I say is optional, but not really if you are doing your own marketing, is getting email marketing software, which can be quite expensive the bigger your email list. Now, a lot of these tools allow you to start for free and up to like 1,000 or 2,000 subscribers, they won't charge you, but that you'll have limited capabilities as well. Uh, but after you have over a few thousand subscribers, your, your costs are going to be between 50 to to $100 a month. I'm, I'm just put $500 a, a year just as a round number. Zapier, if you you want to do more automations and integrations with other tools, it's going to be like another $100 a year. So then there's another number there. You can see it says 10 hours, 10 hours, 10 hours, 10 hours. This is something that a lot of people don't take into account when they're making a choice as to where they want to host their courses is that it's the labor that it takes to learn how to use the tool, to install it, and to maintain the tool. And this is a recurring thing that happens. So while learning, well, maybe if there's a learning curve at the beginning, but then there is a recurring maintenance labor that if you're not outsourcing it, it means you have to do it yourself. And it typically, I'm, I'm saying about less than an hour per tool uh, per month. Uh, so in total, about 90 hours to 100 hours of your own labor to install and maintain all of these tools. Now, if you're paying yourself a fee, if you have an hourly rate, which you should have if you have any kind of job, and let's say it's just, you know, on the low end, $20 an hour, that means that when we add all of this together, your labor is going to be almost $2,000 of labor plus $900 of software fees, you get about $2,700 a year to run your own WordPress operation, right? Uh, or $228 a month. Not bad. I mean, if you're making a few sales, let's say if your flagship course is uh, $297 or, or a, a couple hundred dollars, then you only really need to make a couple of sales to pay off for your whole operation. So it's not like you're going to break the bank as, as long as you're making sales, of course. Now, 
if you were to go through a third-party platform like Thinkific or Teachable, then they cost money, obviously, and, and, and they have different tiers. And it, the, the pay plans are anywhere from like 30 bucks to $100, $100 or something like that. So let's say that you're spending about $50 a month on one of these, these tools. So that's going to be $600 a year. And then about... Again, you, if you use email automation, it's still going to be about $500 a year if you have a couple of thousand of subscribers. So let's say, boom, you're spending about $1,100 a year on, on the software, on the course hosting platform, and on labor, it's going to be less. And this is where it makes a huge difference because you don't have to deal with all these moving parts. It's going to be a lot cheaper. So then you're going to spend about almost $1,000 less if, less if you count your labor than if you were to try to do everything yourself. Uh, or $145 a month. So which one would you choose? And this is a question I get asked all the time. Miguel, why, what about WordPress? Do you think I can save money if I do it all myself? And I'm like, yeah, no. There is, the, the answer is no. I mean, there is advantages. Uh, on Think If You Can Teachable, it's, it's going to be a lot easier for you. It's going to eventually really cost you less if you take into account the amount of labor that it's going to cost you. And, and yes, maybe you can argue that you have less control, maybe less control over the look of your website, but I would argue not so much because on tools like Thinkific now, the building tools that they give you to design your landing pages are very, very good. You can create a very optimized, high converting landing pages with these third party platforms. So there you go. This is, in a nutshell, everything that you need in order to sell courses on WordPress is completely doable, but not highly recommendable. If you want to see more videos like this on course creation, teaching online, and becoming a great and amazing online teacher, make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Thank you and bye-bye.